Women doctors, nurses and medics are essential to frontline medicine today, working in exactly the same roles as men. But a century ago, things were very different. They were actively discouraged from accompanying fighting troops. Dr Elsie Ingalls was a well-known doctor and active suffragette in Edinburgh in 1914, founding several hospitals. On the outbreak of war, she wrote to the War Office, offering her services as a doctor to the front line. Their response infuriated her. My good lady, they told her, go home and sit still. Elsie, of course, given her background, would be having none of this and quickly decided that basically if Britain didn't want to have women doctors and surgeons serving in frontline hospitals, then what she would do is, with the backing of the suffrage societies, she would set up her own female hospital units. Very, very quickly, the Belgians, the French, and in particular, the Serbs, all accepted. A few years ago, a football trip to Serbia sparked a historical passion for Alan Cumming that's led him to become the go-to man for anything about Dr Elsie Ingalls. 1,500 women served in the Scottish women's hospitals in France, Corsica, Russia and Serbia. The route that Elsie would have taken would have been from Cardiff mm -hmm. all the way down through the Mediterranean into the Aegean Sea and on to Thessaloniki. From there she would have taken a train all the way up into Serbia to Nice and then on to the various hospital units. Now, these warriors were very, very dangerous at that time. Not only was there U-boats, they were filled with mines and they had zeppelins overhead. Elsie Ingalls was taken as a prisoner of war in Serbia and the women had to endure the Serbian retreat after the country was invaded. It was dangerous but also revolutionary work. Hospital units staffed entirely by women, from surgeons, doctors and nurses, down to cooks, drivers and clerks. For many of the women, this was a, the opportunity to say to the authorities and to say to the leaders of the time, women now must have the opportunity to become equal. Elsie's unfailing support for the people of Serbia led her to become the first woman awarded the Order of the White Eagle, the country's highest honour. It's now kept in Surgeons Hall Museum in Edinburgh. The Scottish women's hospitals coped with the worst typhus epidemic in history, with 150,000 people killed, as well as typhoid, cholera and the catastrophic injuries of trench warfare. One of the main forms of injury that a soldier would have uh, had it was from shrapnel, so high impact um, rounds that were designed to break into small parts um, and then these would penetrate the body and were extremely damaging on impact and also very difficult to retrieve. They would have been working in extremely different and in very, very difficult conditions. To start with, you would have had soldiers coming from the battlefield who would have been extremely dirty, you know, covered in blood and everything else that went with that. Um, and then the physical buildings themselves are unlike modern hospitals. They're quite often working in tents, so real proper cleanliness to stop infection of wounds was very difficult. Combined with that, you had the extreme heat and the extreme cold of the area. You had mosquitoes, flies. Next year will mark a century since Elsie Ingalls died, and Alan Cumming is now trying to spread the story of the Scottish women's hospitals to a wider audience. He's also visited Serbia several times, where huge commemorations are planned. Elsie sadly died of cancer in 1917. She never got to vote or to see the end of the war, but the Serbs treasure her memory. She was just a light when Serbia was in complete darkness. Uh, so they, they toast her, they remember her, they, they think she's a wonderful, wonderful person. The Serbs have cradled her story in their hearts, and I think it's marvellous. For years, the story of Dr Elsie Ingalls was almost forgotten here in her home city, but it's hoped the centenary of her death will spur on a new celebration of her life. The Scottish women's hospitals risked disease and death to do what they felt was right and to push forward the rights of women during the First World War. Ali Gibson, Forces News, Edinburgh.